Hello. There's always fabulous nonsense coming out of the cult of quantum, or I like to call it the cult of bumping particles. Fundamentally, people don't understand cosmic mechanics, and of course nobody actually spends any time, nor do they actually have the sort of mind that was grew up trying to engage the dialectic and actually think intelligently on certain types of problem solving. This is why the ancient Pythagorean and Greek art of retroduction has been completely lost. Um, it's not that the uh, Pythagoreans and the Platonists were so, like, superhuman, alien, intelligent. They just had certain uh, mental tools, if you will, for being able to arrive at the solutions to the thing. Specifically about cosmic mechanics, I'll give you a couple of irreducible facts, and I'll talk about an article which is in a link below that's just a astonishingly stupid. It's beyond belief. Um, a new article from the Cult of Quantum. Uh, fundamentally, if you ever want to debate uh, stupidity, it's um, typically, if it's well fortified and there are a lot of uh, people that support it, what it is is it has uh, really thick walls and ramparts, but there's always some foundational issue that makes it completely easy to topple the entire thing, and fundamentally toppling uh, the cult of quantum is incredibly easy because from the perspective of cosmic mechanics, the foundation of which all field modalities arise, and by the way, no branch of science has ever defined a field or defined the word energy. They never have. Is that you can only accept two premise as the basis for all cosmic mechanics of the entire universe. One, and I don't care in Mother Nature, or natura naturans, doesn't care what you call it, you either uh, premise a non-Cartesian, non-coordinate inertia, the true original definition of inertia, not as we currently connote it, i.e. the ether, or you postulate a replacement for the ether, which becomes absolutely impossible, and it uh, runs contradictory to 10,000 observed phenomena, such as light speeding up after it leaves glass, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but, and of course, light is not a speed, it's a rate of induction. Light doesn't actually propagate from point A to point B. It's actually a field perturbation modality. It's a, specifically a coaxial circuit. But all the observed phenomena of all types of field modalities, and of course, you have to define a field, and no one branch of science has ever done that. Defining a field is very easy. It's an ether perturbation modality. And to give a very simplex analogy, what's the difference between ice, water, and steam? They're all fundamentally the same thing. They're different pressure and temperature modalities of one and the same thing. They're different expressions of, obviously, the water molecule, correct? And that's all field modalities are. They're different uh, frequency, and obviously one is force of motion, the other one is inertia acceleration, the other one is a hybrid, and the other one's uh, specifically gravity is a misunderstanding of the nature of what gravity is, which is non-point source mutual mass acceleration. But you can only postulate two things as the foundation. Let's not talk about the house. Everybody's worried about the windows and the, the furniture and all the crap in the house, the plumbing. Ultimately, you can destroy anything if it's fundamentally faulty right at the foundation. You don't have to worry about the building and the glass and the timbers and the windows and the doors and the smoke alarm. You never ever have to attack something if it's fundamentally flawed in its infrastructure. If it's fundamentally flawed, it is always flawed at its foundation. The foundation of all cosmic mechanics is one of two houses, and we're talking about the foundations only here, not the house. You either postulate the ether, or you postulate the cult of bumping particles. You postulate the reification of space and time. Now, Tesla fed, said famously the reason why Einstein was a fuzzy-haired crackpot and a lunatic, those are Tesla words, is he reified space as having properties. Specifically, Tesla said, and he's completely accurate, is that space doesn't have properties. Space only has attributes. And what is space akin to as a perfect analogy? As a perfect analogy, it's akin to a shadow. A shadow is not a thing. A shadow is an absence of light. Time is not a thing at all. You and I and everybody else grew up watching these BS TV shows and movies talking about curved space-time, warp space-time. And that's all well and fine. It makes for a nice, entertaining movie, but... That's like talking about bending unicorn farts or bending uh, uh, leprechaun phalluses. 
these things don't exist. We can talk endlessly about fighting dragons until someone with a half a goddamn brain shows up and says there's no such thing as dragons. Why have you all spent 10 years talking about how to fight dragons and they don't even exist? So you only have two bases of called cosmic mechanics. You either have the ether or you have the cult of bumping particles. You have this reification. By the way, the term quantum doesn't refer to anything specifically whatsoever. It's an arbitrary term. If you want to actually look really smart in academia, you take any sentence about science, and of course modern scientists are not scientists in the true Platonic Aristotelian sense. What they are is mathematicians. They only believe in things you can quantize and count. But uh, let's get onto this article here, and the link is below. And it's called, uh, Physicists Say They've Manipulated Pure Nothingness and Observe the Fallout. So they reified something that doesn't exist because there's no such thing as pure nothingness. And by the way, this word quantum, yeah, if you want to look really smart, just stick the word quantum in front of every third word. Take any sentence that is quasi-scientific and stick the word quantum in front of every third word, and that's exactly what uh, academia is. And people say, well, what about quantum computers? Well, I could say that uh, my microwave is a quantum interaction for heating my food up, but that doesn't reify the term quantum as actually having any substantiality. The reification of things does not give credence to that thing. That's a fallacy of composition, specifically. So in this uh, article, which is absolute bullshit, literally this article in summation, I'd love for you to read it. It's not that long. It, it puts forward that uh, an extremely short laser pulse was... Uh, propagated into pure nothingness, a near total vacuum, and they saw a reaction. Well, there's no such thing as pure nothingness. The ether, of course, is non-cartesian. Let me read you this. And by the way, I don't know if you know this or not, but the most evil word in uh, modern science and physics, and, and also among physicists and academia, is the word the ether. Now, you could refer to the word ether a million different ways, but you can never ever call it ether. These are the things they call it. Quantum energy, dark matter, dark energy, quantum foam. They also refer to it as virtual particles or quantum energy. There's actually, I've got a list of like 20 things that they actually call the ether. But of course, what we call it's not important, but I mean, it is the ether. You cannot actually explain cosmic mechanics by uh, mutual interactions of bumping particles or particle interactions. So here in this article, according to quantum mechanics, a vacuum isn't empty at all. It's actually filled with quantum energy. Now, see, see all they did was they replaced the word uh, the ether with quantum energy. This, yeah, if you can't see through that, then you're not very smart. And particles that bleak, blink in and out of existence for a fleeting moment. These are more like virtual particles than physical matter. By the way, I don't know if you ever heard of virtual photons or virtual particles, but, and you can look this up in like Feynman's QED Strange Theory of Light and Matter, type in virtual particles. They will literally tell you what's going on between two magnets. This is not my position of their crazy BS. This is their own position, is that what's going on between two magnets is virtual particle exchange and interaction. They, by their own admission, okay, by their own admission, will tell you that virtual particles are a conceptual idea they have no basis in reality. They're not the input or output of any experiment ever done. They're purely made to make equations balance out, quote unquote. So a completely arbitrary creation, like unicorns and leprechauns. These virtual particles less than physical mass. So ordinarily you can't detect them. Something else weird happens when the fluctuations in some places appear when they actually release a extremely uh, short duration laser pulse in a, uh, a high uh, vacuum void, drops below the background noise, which is even lower than the ground state of empty space. You see, once again, there's no such thing as empty space, or no such thing as nothingness, there's no such thing as a void, okay? The ether is everywhere and nowhere. Now, you can't talk about everywhere, because where is a Cartesian coordinate? It is a topos, it is a location with an XY coordinate, yeah, XYZ coordinate. The ether, of course, has no Cartesian value. It cannot be anywhere and it cannot be everywhere because where is in the second half of each one of those words and we're talking about a Cartesian coordinate. Everywhere, nowhere, anywhere, every... doesn't make any difference. The ether, of course, is non-Cartesian substrate. It is pure inertia. Something else weird happens. These fluctuation and appears below the ground state. Something scientists call an astonishing phenomena. They're actually calling this, quote-unquote, a traffic jam in empty space. In other words, they, 
they uh, manifest a super uh, short duration uh, laser pulse and uh, they notice that not only is there a reaction in this pure nothingness of which there's no such thing, they notice there's even a, a, a default um, that, uh, that uh, I'm trying to remember the exact words, that falls way below the ground state of empty space. This is an ether reaction. This is the true Michelson-Morley experiment. Michelson-Morley experiment, of course, never disproved the ether. It was a, not even an experiment by the true denotation of ignorantly, in their profound ignorance, this BS article is nothing other than a modern-day affirmation of the original bullshit experiment, the Michelson-Morley experiment, proving that the ether exists. The only difference is, is that this BS article that all these scientists are so excited over they're replacing the word ether with quantum energy. It's like, oh my God, we, we set up a laser burst and we notice a huge reaction from nothingness, from, uh, from uh, pure nothingness, actually, as I call it. Physicists have manipulated pure nothingness and observed a fallout. Obviously, nihil ex nihilo, nothing comes from nothing. There's no such thing as pure nothingness. Subject precedes object negation. If you actually were a witness to pure nothingness, it wouldn't have been nothingness because there would be a witness present to it. Pure nothingness is, once again, purely conceptual. No pun intended. Physicists have studied the quantum vacuum, and they've noticed a traffic jam in empty space from this, this uh, reaction of this uh, laser burst. At some points, the fluctuations became way louder than the background noise of an unsqueezed... They're actually talking about squeezing what they themselves are calling pure nothingness. And that's like t saying that you've, uh, you know, you've, uh, you've kicked a unicorn in, in, the, in the crotch, or you've, you've uh, just uh, pantsed a leprechaun, or you've just, uh, you know, it's ridiculous. You're squeezing something that has absolutely no value, pure nothingness. They're talking about squeezing nothingness. It's ridiculous. It's like talking about uh, hugging, uh, your never born child from the wife that you never married. It was pure ridiculousness. I mean, this sort of brain dead buffoonery, you know, is what landed people in straitjackets ages ago. But it doesn't matter if you call it quantum energy or dark matter or dark energy. And by the way, by their own admission, the only reason they call it dark matter is one, this is their own admission. They call it dark because they don't know what the hell it is. Their own admission. And the reason why they call it matter is they, because they think everything is matter. This is, of course, atomism. There's only two foundations of all cosmic mechanics that you can postulate. The ether, doesn't matter if you call it the ether, who gives a crap what you call it, or particles. The particle premise is absolutely impossible. It cannot explain uh, the breaking the law of conservation from light speeding back up after it leaves like water or glass or countless of other medium because everything's capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, or dielectric permittivity. Everything is either force and motion, inertia and acceleration. It's either centrifugal divergence, i.e. magnetism, the creation of space, or it's centripetal convergence, i.e. increasing inertia and acceleration, i.e. towards counter space. This is the conjugate geometry of the universe, the torus and the hyperboloid respectively the donut shape and the uh, hourglass shape. The conjugate geometry interplay between those two. This is ridiculous. You're talking about PhD particle physicists talking about unicorn farts and uh, leprechaun peckers. Pure nothingness. We squeezed nothingness. We saw a traffic jam in totally empty space. This is an astonishing phenomena, quote unquote. They're talking about virtual particles. Virtual particles is conceptual. It's never been the input or output of any experiment ever done. You should read this article uh, in this link below. It's only like about a half a page long. Oh, big discovery. We've manipulated pure nothingness and we had, a, we had an output. If you had a half a brain, all you do is look at this and go, oh, this is just nothing other than confirmation of what the idiot Michelson-Morley experiment didn't do to begin with ages ago, which was not a experiment by any definition of the term. So what they're talking about in reality, if you translate the bullshit to common sense or somebody with a little bit of intelligence, which these people don't have, is that we released a super short uh, duration, one million billionth of a second laser burst, and we saw the ether react from that field pressure release of energy in the form of a laser. We saw a reaction from the ether Except the only difference is they're calling it quantum energy. They're calling it pure nothingness. 
but that's because they're idiots. The only reason they're calling the ether pure nothingness is one, the greatest heresy of a PhD particle physicist or scientist is to mention or talk about the ether. It would be like, you know, wearing 666 across your shirt and uh, being a cardinal in the Catholic Church or something, you know, having like a having a, a bumper sticker, the Pope having a bumper sticker, which is not too far from the truth, on the back of his car saying, you know, all hail Satan. I mean, it's, you can't do that. That's the biggest heresy. You have to believe in atomism. You have to believe in quantum farts, unicorn knuckles, uh, leprechaun noses, this insane, irrational, atomistic nonsense with no basis in reality. We're talking about observed phenomena from a laser pulse duration release and they saw the ether literally snapping back. They saw a reaction, a pushback, if you will, of the ether. The only difference is they decided to call it quantum energy. Because you can't say the word ether when you're one of these brain-dead, atomistic assholes. You have to say quantum energy, dark matter, dark energy, quantum foam. There's a lot of stuff you can call it, but you can't call it the ether. You can't call it what it really is. Because that's a heresy to these pathetic, brain-dead, knuckle-dragging, mental midget fools. I hope you like these videos. If you do, you can always click the link below. Any donation always helps. Um, let me know what I could help you with. Have a great day. Hashtag quantum BS. <laughs>